Thinking back to a young Gordon Ramsay early in your career, could you have won one of these shows? <laughs> That's a really good question. Uh, first of all, Mr. Ramsey, always an honor, sir. Good Jake, to see you. As always, you good know, to see you, my man. Every time I watch one of your shows, one of the things I take away from it is that these shows are not easy to win. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, a lot of sacrifice. Thinking back to a young Gordon Ramsay early in your career, could you have won one of these shows? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I think I, I wanted no distractions mm -hmm. on that journey. And so would I have won? Um, I don't think I would have been good for TV because I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just want to focus in that zone like a pro athlete. So I would have been firm, fair, the hardest person, you know, in terms of working in that uh, competition. That's a really good question. I do often ask myself that, put myself in their shoes. I certainly wasn't earning anywhere near a quarter million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, my first real restaurant, I had to take a part-time consultancy role, uh, developing food for Marks and Spencer mm -hmm. in order to stay in this job to create something perfect mm -hmm. because you don't come into this business for money. You perfectly led into my next question because I had the great pleasure of chatting with uh, some of the members of Food Stars. Yes. And one of the questions I asked them was, if you were to win that $250,000, in what way would it be a watershed moment? Like, how, how do you need it? How would you use it? And they all had this incredible answer that honestly made me feel like they kind of all mm. need it for that next step. Do you remember that moment in your career where you had that watershed moment where you wouldn't be sitting in that chair today if it weren't for that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think going into business is hard, mm -hmm. and the chances of success is narrow. But I remember convincing my wife to sell our apartment to get a deposit in order to garner sufficient equity to get our first lease. And so that was my risk. And so, funnily enough, it was a quarter million dollars. Hers we, as well. Uh, hers as well. And all of a sudden, we got the security. Uh, Megan had just been born, and there was this sort of first two-little-bedroom apartment, and it was... It's her home, she said. Mm. You know, supposing this doesn't work. So I actually quite enjoyed that level of pressure because that kept me more focused. But yeah, it's, it's a game changer. Whether that's used to develop the distribution, buy more product, grow their team out. You know, it's a big lump of cash. And especially in today's economy, uh, it's going to go well. Mm. Uh, there was a study that came out recently that said post-pandemic, there's a higher percentage of people who are cooking from home. They don't want to order out. I think the people, the number of people that are cooking four nights a week at home has yeah. skyrocketed. Uh, I really want to do that. I'm, I'm in a relationship. I've got a girlfriend who I love, and I really want to be the kind of boyfriend who cooks more. I've just, it's just not been a part of my life. I've been a single, I, I, I order. Honestly, for people out there who say, look, I want to do it. I yes. don't know how to do it. I buy the bags of lettuce, and they go brown in the fridge. No, what what no. advice would you have to sort of kind of change? And I'm not yeah. saying become Gordon Ramsay, but just... Be but, <laughs> useful around the kitchen. Yeah, there's a juxtaposition on that answer because I need you in the restaurants. <laughs> and, and breaking sort of, you know, bread and having sure. fun and that atmosphere. You know, cooking at home is lovely, okay? And it's a sort of intimate thing. But then when the family extends, it gets, it's a chore. So let's not forget the excitement mm -hmm. inside restaurants, the buzz, the atmosphere, the sort of, the speeches, mm -hmm. the insight, the intimacy. So now with 75 restaurants across the globe, trust me, I still need you eating out. So Fair don't, enough. don't get so, too good a so chef. We still, stay at home. Still take cooking. Adrian out, but you're saying, no. but then, then occasionally maybe. Exactly, especially weekends, especially Sunday stuff. That's the sort of stuff that you want to sort of sit and relax for three hours without someone asking for the table back after 90 minutes. Fair enough. Uh, mention the, all the restaurants around the world. Uh, I've been to many of your restaurants around the world. I've been to London, I've been to Vegas, I've been to Chicago. I want to talk about Chicago for a yes. second because one of the things I most appreciate about your, your restaurants is that they're not copy-paste. It doesn't feel yeah. like you just planted the same restaurant all over the world. Yeah. Every restaurant is kind of uh, a reflection of the city that it's in. Chicago has its own flavor, its own personality, particularly in regards to the food scene. Yes. What adjustments did you have to make to the Gordon Ramsay brand, mm -hmm. the food, the style, yeah. to fit into the city of Chicago? Uh, great question. First of all, Chicago's been one of the most creative and melting pots uh, on the culinary map, mm -hmm. especially uh, in the US. And so I like, him, I like to make it tailor-made to locals. Mm -hmm and keep this thing that it embeds, embeds itself within the community. Mm -hmm. And so key staff from the neighborhood, uh, local talent that uh, you know, want to use my restaurant as their platform. Mm -hmm. 
and then the menu. The menu needs to reflect what's happening. They don't want to see this conglomerate that's coming out sourcing the ingredients from outside mm -hmm. of the other side of the world. They want to see something tangible they can relate to. So whether it's the, ben the blend in the chuck or the, uh, the actual patty, uh, a local beautifully made uh, bun, I like supporting those local businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how you get consistent with what the offering is. And also, there's nothing obscure in that menu. Mm -hmm. It's localized, but more importantly, it can be it can be it can be only done there, and that's crucial for me. I can tell you, it's my favorite burger joint in the city of Chicago. Thank that's you. That, and I'm not saying that because you're here. I've said no, it before without it. you being in the room. They're giving me the wrap. I'm going to cut you loose on. I love asking people about their most, their most this or the most that. Yes. Uh, what is the absolute worst meal you've ever made in your entire life that received the most? Just everyone in the room going, really? This, from from him? This guy? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't many. I mean, I don't make many fuck ups. <laughs> so, uh, and if I did, I always teach my chefs, you know. If you're not happy, don't send it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I haven't had that many mishaps. Mm -hmm. I've been served a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. uh, I've drank uh, liters of Pepto Bismol. And uh, I, uh, I have an iron stomach. And so, yeah, I would never send anything substandard. So Tilly called me out recently at Sunday lunch. Um, she said this uh, garlic, yo, know, with the butter beans inside the uh, roasted chicken is burnt. I said, no, no, Tills, it's caramelized. <laughs> So then she held it up on her fork and said, nah, I'm sorry. You know, the survey says it's burnt, Dad. I'm like, oh my God. And she was actually right. It was the bit that stuck to the side of the tray and it was blackened garlic uh, and she called me out. The importance of being surrounded by people in our lives who will call us out. Man, honestly, I mean, daughters, uh, <laughs> daughters are tough. They'll do it. They are tough, trust me. So, uh, especially Matilda. Sure. 21 years of age and calls me out for over caramelizing the garlic. My man. Mr. Ramsey, I say this every single time we chat, man. You're one of my favorite people to talk with you. I appreciate Likewise. you for being so kind since Likewise. the years we've been chatting. So, yeah, love you, buddy. Likewise. Thank you so much. Appreciate Set your time. You